When it comes to equilibrium, shift happens. So you better get your shift together and give a shift. That's right, today we're talking about Le Chatelier's principle. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a cam thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shoe Fu coming at ya. I'm your host, Fu, and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So Shu, in the last episode we talked about equilibrium and you finally figured out what's equal in equilibrium. Yeah, that really gave me a lot of stress. Funny you mention that, we're gonna talk about how stress affects equilibrium. Well that's gonna stress me out even more. So let's get started. Le Chatelier's Principle, a lesson from the kinetics and equilibrium unit. Let's start out by talking about stress. A stress in your life is something that disrupts your sense of well-being. A stress in chemistry is any change that disrupts an equilibrium. Stresses may include changes in concentration, temperature, pressure, and the presence of a catalyst. Le Chatelier's principle. Let's start with the definition. To deal with a stress in your life, you do something to remove the stress such as eating, sleeping, exercising, listening to music, screaming, etc. To deal with the stress in chemistry, Le Chatelier's principle states that you will temporarily speed up the forward or reverse reaction to remove the stress. General rules of Le Chatelier's principle. If you have too much and excess stress of something, move away from it. If you have too little, a deficiency stress of something, move toward it. We're gonna introduce some applications of how Le Chatelier's principle is applied. First, we're gonna focus on changes in concentration. When there is an increase in the concentration, speed up the direction that removes the excess. When there is a decrease in concentration, speed up the direction that creates more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a series of examples here for you to illustrate how we apply Le Chatelier's principle. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, if you look at the top of the slide, we have an equation. It's at equilibrium. We know this because it has a double-headed arrow. We're going to change the concentration of A. We're going to increase the concentration of A. So what is our stress if I do that? All right, so the stress would be that I have too much A. It wasn't there before, and now I've added it, so too much of A. Okay. So what does Le Chatelier's principle tell us to do if we're going to relieve that stress? Well, there's too much of it, we wanna get rid of it. So to get rid of it, we'd have to temporarily speed up the forward reaction and sort of move away from A to get rid of it. Okay, so if the forward reaction is increasing, that shift is always what? To the right. Perfect. So we're going to then determine what happens to the concentration of all the substances in the equation. And so how come there's a dash by A? Well, in this example, we're changing A, so we're seeing what effect A has on everything else. Oh, okay. All right, so what happens to the concentration of B? Well, as I speed up the forward reaction and shift right, A and B react, so I gotta use up B, kinda take it with A as it goes in the forward direction, so B goes down. That's very good. All right. What happens to C? Uh, C is a product, so since I'm shifting to the right towards it, I'm making more of it, so it's increasing. Very good, and what about D? And D is also a product, so same thing. Perfect. Okay, so we have our chemical equilibrium, and now we're gonna disrupt it. We're gonna add the stress of too much A by adding A from an outside source. So how are we gonna get rid of that extra A? Well, we're gonna temporarily speed up the forward reaction. We call this a shift to the right. As a result, the amount on the left goes down and the amount on the right goes up. All right, Chu, same equation here. Instead, we're gonna change the concentration of C. We're gonna increase the concentration of C. All so right. what's our stress? So again, there's uh, too much of it, so too much C. So whenever we increase, we've always got too much. All right. Okay, so what is Le Chatelier's principle gonna tell us to do as far as the shift is concerned? Well, I have too much C, I wanna get rid of it. I have an excess of it, so I'm gonna shift to the left to use it up. Okay, very good. And once we've established our shift to the left, let's determine the concentrations of all the other substances in this equation. What happens to them? All right, well, we're moving toward A and B in the reverse reaction, so both A and B would be going up. 
There go. And as I speed up the reverse, I gotta use up D, sort of take D with C to go back to A and B. So D would be going down. Perfect. So now our stress is too much C. We have too many products. So to get rid of those extra products, we're gonna temporarily speed up the reverse reaction. This is a shift to the left. And as a result, the amount on the right goes down and the amount on the left goes up. All right, let's do a third example shoe. We're gonna change the concentration of B. We're gonna actually decrease B this time. So what happens when we decrease the concentration of B? What's our stress? Um, well, it's actually going down, so I'd have too little of B. Very good. So let's figure out the shift. As far as Le Chatelier's principle goes, what is that gonna tell us to do to compensate for too little B? Okay, so yeah, I have too little B. It's a deficiency, I need more of it. So to make more of it, I'd wanna shift toward it. So I'd be uh, speeding up temporarily the reverse reaction. Very so going good. this way, right? Yep. So that is a shift to the left. Good, and as soon as you have that shift established, the concentration change of the other three substances should be very easy, so let's get those down. All right, so I'm moving toward A, so A is gonna increase, and I'm moving away from C and D, so they're both gonna decrease. Yeah, so whatever you're moving towards goes up, whatever you're moving away from goes down. Very good. Okay, so now our stress is that we're going to remove B. We're actually taking it out of our equilibrium. And so what are we gonna do about that deficiency of B? Well, we're gonna temporarily speed up the reverse reaction, which is a shift to the left. And as a result, we're gonna have less on the right and more on the left. All right, one final change in concentration here, Shu. The concentration of D decreases. So what's our stress? Our stress is too little D. All right, so where is D in the equation? That's on the product side. All right, so where are we gonna shift? Well, I need more of it, I don't have enough, so I'm gonna move toward it. That is to the right. Good, so once we have that shift established, we should know what happens to the concentrations of the other three substances. All right, so we're moving away from A and B, we're using them up, A and B go down, and C is increasing. Very good. Okay, our next stress is that we're removing D. So we're taking D out of the product side of our equilibrium. So how are we gonna make up for that deficiency? Well, we're gonna temporarily speed up the forward reaction. We shift to the right, and as a result, we have less on the left and more on the right. Next, we're gonna talk about changes in temperature. When there is an increase in temperature, speed up the direction that removes the heat. That's the endothermic direction. When there is a decrease in temperature, speed up the direction that creates more heat. That's the exothermic direction. All right, we're gonna look at a couple of examples and examine how changing the temperature affects the equilibrium. Are you ready, Fu? I am. All right, so same equilibrium as before. It says the change is the temperature of the system increases. So what's our stress? Our stress is we have more or excess heat or too much heat. Too much heat, good. Now what we wanna do for this is actually find where the heat of reaction, delta H, appears in the equation. Okay, so that's right here. Good, so if the stress is too much heat, we wanna get rid of that heat. Which way are we going to shift to get rid of that excess heat? Oh, so if it's excess, it's kinda of like concentration. So if the heat's on the right, I'm gonna shift to the left. Good, that's gonna get rid of the heat. Now, just to make this clear, is this the endothermic or exothermic direction that we're shifting in? Well, in order to go to the left, I gotta take heat in because it's there on the right. So this is endothermic. Very good, we're taking that heat in and that is helping reduce the stress of there being too much of it, very good. All right, so what's gonna happen to the concentrations of all the other species? Well, I'm going to the left, I'm going towards A and B, so those are both going to increase. And I'm going away from C and D, so those are both gonna decrease. Very good. So now we've increased the temperature and our stress is that there's too much heat. How are we gonna get rid of that heat? Well, the heat's over on the product side. So we're gonna move away from that heat to take it in and absorb it. So we're gonna shift to the left. Okay, so in this example, the change is that the temperature of the system decreases. So Fu, what's our stress here? Um, well, in this case, if the temperature's decreasing, I have too little heat. Very good. And again, we have the heat over on the product side, right? Okay. So if I have too little heat, 
I want to make more heat. Which way am I going to shift to do that? Well, if I want more heat, I'm going to go towards it. So that means I'm shifting to the right. Good. So now is this the endothermic or exothermic direction? Well, if I have too little heat, I want to produce more. That's an exothermic reaction. Very good. Releasing heat and it's on the product side. All right, let's fill in what happens to the concentration of all other species. All right, well, I'm going away from A and B, so both of those go down, and I'm going towards C and D, so both of those go up. Very good. Okay, now our stress is that we've lowered the temperature. We have too little heat. We want to make more, so we're going to shift in the exothermic direction to make more heat. So we're going to shift to the right. Temperature is the only stress that actually changes the value of the equilibrium constant, KEQ. So if we have an exothermic forward reaction and we increase the temperature, there's going to be a left shift and K will decrease. For an exothermic forward reaction, when I decrease the temperature, there's going to be a right shift and K increases. For an endothermic forward reaction, if I increase the temperature, I shift to the right and K increases. And finally, for an endothermic forward reaction, if I decrease the temperature, I will shift left and K decreases. Changes in pressure. When there is an increase in pressure, speed up the direction that removes the excess pressure. This is the direction with fewer number of moles of gas. When there is a decrease in pressure, speed up the direction that creates more pressure. This is the direction with greater number of moles of gas. Note. Ignore solids, liquids, and aqueous when counting up the number of moles on each side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see a couple examples here of how changing pressure can affect equilibrium. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, so given this equation at equilibrium, we're going to increase the pressure on it. So what's my stress? My stress should be that there's too much pressure. Too much pressure. So we got to figure out our shift here. So what are we going to do if we have too much pressure? Well, we want to actually remove that excess pressure and get rid of it. Very but good. I don't know based on looking at that equation, like which way I'm supposed to go. Well, if we have less gas, we have less pressure. Oh, so that'll help reduce it if I have less gas. Good. So we want to move in the direction of fewer moles of gas. So what I want you to do is look at your equation and find out how many moles of gas are on each side. All right, well, I have one gas and one gas on the left, so two moles of gas. And then over on the right, I've got two and one, that's three moles of gas. Okay, so we've got too much pressure. We need to relieve it. We're gonna shift away from uh, the too much moles. We're gonna go towards the side with fewer moles. All right, good, so we're gonna shift to the left because it'll reduce the amount of gas and help reduce the pressure, right? Very good. All right, so shift left. And as soon as we figure out that shift, it's very simple to figure out what's going on with the concentrations of everything else. So what's happening to A, B, C, and D? All right, well, I'm moving toward A and B, so they're both going up, and I'm moving away from C and D, so they're both going down. Very good. Now, our stress is an increase in pressure. Remember that pressure only affects gases. We want to reduce that extra pressure. We've got two moles of gas on the left and three moles of gas on the right. So if we create fewer moles of gas, that's gonna help reduce the pressure. So as a result, I'm going to shift to the left. All right, Shu, this time we have a decrease in the pressure of the system. So what's gonna happen to our stress? What's our stress? Uh, we have too little pressure now. Too little pressure. So what is going to be our shift to increase that pressure? All right, so yeah, we don't have enough. It's a deficiency, we wanna make more. So I'm thinking we wanna move this time towards more moles of gas to create more pressure. Very good. All right, so from before I had two moles of gas on the left, I had three moles of gas on the right. So I would shift to the right to make more gas and create more pressure. Very good. And again, we've got our shift, so what happens to our concentrations? All right, I'm moving away from A and B, so they're both going to go down. I'm moving towards C and D, they're both going up. Perfect. Now our stress is a decrease in pressure. We don't have enough. So we want to shift to the side that makes more moles of gas. That will help create more pressure. So I'm going to shift to the right. Finally, we have the addition of a catalyst. 
A catalyst lowers the activation energy of both the forward and reverse reactions equally. Thus, the catalyst speeds up the forward and reverse reactions equally, and there is no shift in one direction. Catalysts don't give a shift. A catalyst speeds up the forward and reverse reactions equally. Notice that the addition of a catalyst didn't cause any net shift in our equilibrium. Catalysts don't give a shift. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode on Le Chatelier's Principle. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by Obvious Plant. Stupidest animals, these creatures suck. Penguin, looks stupid, can't fly, it's shaped like an egg. Look at this thing, it is so dumb. This is not a toy. Warning, choking hazard. Don't swallow the animal. But we never off, or we zone to the brick of dawn. A C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.